It was in color back then, when it all unfolded. But now, we see it in black and white. But it was never in black and white. Maybe shaded in gray, but never, ever, black and white. Was Wild Bill Hickok an entirely good person? Was Billy the Kid an entirely evil person? When the Earps and the Clantons threw lead at the OK Corral, were there only good people on one side and bad people on the other? Even though one side was called the law and the other side outlaw? Jesse James grew up a fighter, but who was to say he grew up wrong? When the Civil War broke out, the Jameses lived in a little patch of Missouri where the Jayhawkers and the Bushwhackers both committed atrocities. The James boys, Frank and Jesse, became Confederates. And as they say, the winners write the history of who did good and who did evil. After the war came the notorious James Younger gang that found its downfall in Minnesota. It was then that the James boys retreated to Tennessee and new names. It was there that Frank and Jesse had a chance for a fresh start. It was a time to learn whether a bad man could ever be good or if there was bad in good men. Far enough for me. Where are we at? Tennessee? <laughs> How's the law around here? The law? Well, this state was half Union and half Confederate. So who really knows? But I reckon it don't bother me none. Aren't you ready to get off the Alhoop Trail? Maybe. How many times do you need to be shot, brother? Been shot twice, ain't none stopped me yet. Well, as we've seen it, it only takes once. Just ask the younger brothers. Me? Maybe I'll take up some farming. Get some hogs and chickens. Hogs and chickens. 
Maybe I'll take a wife. Maybe two. Oh. Sounds like y'all made a little tired from all that farming. I ain't never too tired for that. If I got a good horse, I can go between a farm wife and a town gal all the time. I'm not sure I've got a plan. I ain't sure I got my net. Damn it, Jesse. I don't want to do this without you. Why ain't you ready for two wives and a pass of chickens? You just had all the guns in Minnesota pointed against you. What else do y'all need to see? One more ride. One more game. See ya, Thomas Howard. Bye, BJ Woodson. Good luck, little brother. When I am toiling on the farm, I always have you under my arm. I keep you under a shady tree, cause little brown jug, do I love thee. Tis you who makes me friends and foes. Tis you that makes me wear old clothes. Oh, but now that you're so close to my nose, bottoms up and down it goes. I think it's about time we uh, liven up this night just a little bit, don't you think so, baby doll? If there's anything worse than your uh, harmonica playing, it's your tracking. Seen you on my back trail since before noon. We're just traveling the same way since the gang broke up is all. Then who's going around saying this is a James gang? I thought you didn't need that name no more. Don't you go by Thomas Howard these days? It don't matter what I call myself, the James gang last rode in Minnesota. This is Tennessee. Hell, we done thought you quit Tennessee. We didn't think you'd mind. Mind? You didn't think I'd mind what you did up in Sugar Hollow? I did not have nothing to do with that. Which one of you used my name? We're still a gang. We may have followed every end of the compass hunting you, but we're still a gang. Which one of you used my name? I rightly don't recall. Honestly, none of us thought you'd pay it no never mind, seeing as you ain't using it no more. Now, come on. Why don't you plop down next to me, have yourself a drink. Was never fit to run the James Gang. There's only one Jesse James. You son of a. Ooh, 
Oh, I never thought them homesteaders would ever stop hollering. Say, uh, what'd you have to do to shut them boys up, huh? <laughs> Anyways, I went and checked out that fire. It looked like it started in Bud's campsite. And Bud? Uh, Bud didn't make it. It looked like he passed out right next to his campfire. Right next to a big bottle of evil spirits. Always knew the drink would end up killing him someday. Drink never killed no man. Neither did no damn fire. Jesse. Don't say his name like he's somebody. He can be killed like any man. <laughs> Please, sir, cut me down. Sir? Why would I do that? I thought you were a kind Tennessee gentleman, sir. <laughs> oh, you're tough like I was born in Missouri. I, I have money. Back on my farm. They took what I had on me. Who was the they? Outlaws. They slept you tight up here? I think they're coming back. I mean, how strap yet today, what do they look like? They were ugly, mean, and horrible. Well, those might be the fellows I've been looking for. I might just set a spell and see. Please just cut me free. Now, uh, see, this is kind of like fishing, and uh, you're the bait. Why was he out here all alone without a man anyway? I don't have a man. My husband was killed in the Battle of Bull's Gap. Which side? He was a rebel, sir. Not like a scoundrel like you would know anything about it. I was a bushwhacker out in Missouri, fighting Jayhawks with Bloody Bill Anderson. Well, I wouldn't know anything about that. My husband was an actual Confederate soldier. God rest his soul. Well, thank you for that, sir. Nobody calls me sir except bank tellers with a gun pointed in their face. Then what is your name? Thomas Howard. Good to meet you, Thomas. Josephine Marcus. Josephine? Those evil men, they know exactly where they left me. I mean, they're the ones who did tie me up after all. Well, these good outlaws, that's true. Almost doesn't make a difference if I'm here waiting as long as you're here. You could let me go. It's not gonna make a difference to the outcome. You're not going to help a widow of the Confederacy? Oh, here we go. I wouldn't be in this mess if it wasn't for those damn Yankees. I don't mean either of the crow flies. Brigadier General Thomas Benton Smith is the one who brought me the news. He was injured in the battle for Nashville, so I pray for him daily. Brigadier General Thomas Benton Smith. God damn, I think that gold watch you gave back was the best thing on that stagecoach. Didn't you hear that man say he was with General Smith at Chukamunga? Well, if everyone who said he was a rebel had actually fought, we would have won the damn war. Well, I looked into his eyes, and that's good enough for me. What's that supposed to mean? You done seen if a man's been to war when you look into his eyes. Can't you see it in mine? What are you looking at a man's hands before you rob him? I ain't robbing a working man. If a man has rough hands, he can keep his money. Well, I got rough hands, and I could use some. I stood with the Confederacy, and that don't go away too easy. I know. You know I have to stand for something, don't you? Well, like I said, you're a widow of the Confederacy.
Howdy, Jesse. My name is Thomas Howard. <laughs> and I'm actually Mary Todd Lincoln. Care to join old Abe? You gonna kill me, Jesse? Like you killed those women up in Sugar Hollow? Drop the knife, Jesse. Now the irons. Now the other knife in your boot. Now, that little gun you keep behind your shirt. Yeah, you better be glad your gang never saw that little thing. Yeah, the hole looks big enough when you look straight at it. <laughs> what else you got, Jesse? Look, my name is Thomas Howard, and what I got here is pure frontier defense. <laughs> Does Tennessee really look like the frontier to you? I didn't figure it was a greenhorn, but maybe you is. Go ahead and open that vest. All right, now drop your pants. I told you, I am a widow, not a spinster. Drop your pants. Well, suppose it looks big enough. You know, if you look right at it. I think I like the yellow Josephine better. <laughs> Well, as your luck would have it, my name is Belle Hart. What, you think that's the first time a woman's ever lied to you? You're just not like any Belle I've ever met. Well, that, sir, is your misfortune. Hey! Can't have you running into the brush now, can I, Jesse? What do you think you're doing? I am going to take you into town. Then I'm going to collect the bounty on your head for all those murders up in Sugar Hollow. Look, I want to know what happened in Sugar Hollow myself. Being blind drunk does not excuse you from what you did. Blind drunk? Look, my name is Thomas Howard. I think there's been a huge misunderstanding. Can't cover no four points of the compass no more. No need. Budding at their fire done cut off one direction already. And if old Jesse would have backtracked south, he would have ended up at the homestead last night. So we got three directions today. I think Jesse went north to Missouri. I'll tell you what, Mitt, I need you to go west in case he took the long way around. And John, you go east. That there is towards Nashville. He already done lit out of there. Yeah, it suits me. Well, your gun ain't fast enough for old Jesse? I reckon it's fast enough for anyone. And it's fast enough that you can go by yourself instead of having old toothless John there following you along. Listen, we can't go back to that there homestead, but there's a creek that runs off that sulfur springs. You ones meet me there by nightfall. We're gonna hunt all day again. I'll tell you what, John, you shoot him, you go to that creek, you rest a spell. It's all the same to both of y'all. I'd like to put a bolt in him myself. If you only want to shoot him once, then you must not want to kill him. Believe me, I do. Look, we all want him dead. We just have to finish this today. Today. You're dressed like a cow puncher. Should have shoot on that. Reckon you should have. You know, seeing you tied to that tree back there, you know, it played on my gentle nature. Oh! Oh, your gentle nature. So what exactly are you? I'm a woman what's got an itchy trigger finger. No, I mean, what exactly are you? I'm a bounty hunter, Jesse. Well, you don't come me by surprise. I don't know of no women bounty hunters. Eh, it works pretty well, don't it? I gotta stop for a minute. Stop? Well, yeah, you thought I could walk all the way to Nashville without one stop? I thought you said you wasn't a spinster. Eh, 
anyway, I don't intend to walk all the way to Nashville. I got a horse and another one. I've been leading with it somewhere around here. Well, that's nice of you. you need to take a break? I'll, uh, I'll stay in guard if you like. No, thank you. Well, suit yourself. Now, where are them horses? They're right around here. Right around here or right here? Because right around here is one thing, right here is quite another thing. Horse, Horse thieves. thieves. Come on! I'm not a lot of horse thieves, though. Jesse, you come out from there. Out right there sounds like old Toothless John. Jesse, I done seen you back there. Nah, that one there's got teeth. Well, that's him then. He doesn't has a false set he puts in when he's out owl hooting. I'm throwing off a lot of law dogs. Jesse, come out from there. John, I'm tied to a woman right now. I don't care if you done got married. You best come out from there. God damn it, John. I mean, I'm literally handcuffed to a woman. <laughs> Back in Deadwood, you had to pay extra for something like that. His mind just goes where it goes. Jesse, I think it's best we parlay. That's all I can do. I ain't got a gun. Uh, what about you, little missy? What about me is I ain't called missy! But, yeah. Parlay! <laughs> well, ain't that a sight. Who used my name, John? I don't know nothing about that, Jesse. You start hunting us, so we start hunting you. That's practically the law in Tennessee. It's what you done to my name. Hey, it weren't like that, Jesse. You just trying to backshoot me, but it weren't like that. You is honorable. <laughs> Look, I is honorable. Uh, at least. Uh, for the outlaw trail. I reckon that trail ends here. It ends in hell. Reckon you didn't know I was a left-handed gun, did you? Reckon I didn't. Well, I'll be uh, thanking you for that key back. done fell out when we were running. It can't have got far. Come on. Well, the hell with this. Now, that there's a pretty difficult shot. Bullet could bounce off, kill one of us. I'm a lot smaller than you, so how do you want to lay them cards? I'm a pretty good shot. <laughs> really? Because all I have seen you shoot is a man standing out in a wide open field. You know, I could just shoot off your little pinky there. Or maybe uh, two of your fingers, a little hand will just slip right through and there, that's that. I don't think you'll do it. Yeah, why not? You done had your chance to pull me in front of yourself with Toothless John. You didn't do it. <laughs> I don't need a woman to hide behind. I think you won't shoot a woman. Now, where do you think Toothless John picketed them horses? Well, them horses are probably long gone. If I know John, he run them off and then snuck back to sling bullets. He's the wrong gun hand for that job. Well, 
Nashville it is then. Oh, we're gonna find a blacksmith or a trading post or something and find some tools. Well, I don't know these parts too well. Well, let's hope we find something soon. I've been, I've been known to have a rather changeable mind. Is there a creek near here? There's always a creek nearby. Well, we'll just follow the creek then. People always build along a creek. <laughs> You know, snakes ain't too bad in these parts. You don't have to be so jumpy. I ain't afraid of no snakes. You know, see, it's damn Tennessee folk. You know, I've never known a people more likely to sneak up on a man for back shooting. You know, that's too done tried to get me. Or, or is that just the men? You know, the women I've met seem like they come straight at you. Well, the delicate ones know not to make your acquaintance. Oh, well, my brother intends to marry one or two of them, so I ought to warn them off then. Well, for the sake of the ladies of Tennessee, maybe so. Why'd you leave the damn horses? You've been shot. They might think you done fell off dead. We could have run double on yours. You ain't never rode behind no one. And you ain't taking the reins in the position you're in all stove up like that. Listen, little brother. We gotta throw them off our trail. And we ain't gonna do that on no horse. So we're gonna have to ford this stream. Walk the creek a little while. I can't get my legs under me. You're gonna have to, Jesse. Jesse! Jesse! Jesse. I said I'd reckon I'd follow the south for a spell. North. My, but that is a very tiresome sight. What's north? My business runs north. Well. So does Missouri, but that's a pretty long walk. Well, I reckon I'll walk. I'm gonna find some tools to use and horses to steal. <laughs> All right, well, that sounds like a very full day, so when you're ready for a break, just let me know. The horses come here to drink. <laughs> <laughs> well, those horses have pretty tiny feet. I tracked Jayhawkers during the war. And I happen to know some poor old woman has to come down here with a bucket every day. Come on. Don't look like there's been anyone here for a while. They done moved on. They were wiped out. I'm face the other chickasaws around here. They ain't. It's the whites like you we gotta look out for. See? Everyone's moved on. Well, them Chickasaws probably took all the good stuff. There ain't no Chickasaw around here. Why would you want to scrap with them so bad? Don't you got enough people that want to shoot you already? That looks pretty dull. How long are you plan on hitting that metal? not going to work. How was you raised? Have you even ever been in a barn before? I know barns. 
No, I mean when you're not hiding from a posse. I grew up on 100 acres. Yeah, well, you at least gonna give me my gun back? Why the hell would I do that? You're not gonna get loose, and you're not gonna shoot me, and one of us might need to fight our way out of a jam. I done shot Toothless John Square on, and you miss him clean in two shots. No, I was just trying to scare him off. That there is difficult shooting. Ladies first. I reckon it looks all right. This ain't gonna be too far back for you, is it? Well, this is as far back as you wanna go. I don't know. That last one looks a bit stuck to the board. Well, that first one was a test shot. I'm just trying to get a feel for this here iron, okay? Oh, so you didn't get a feel for the iron when you done shot Toothless John. It's different shooting at something that shoots back. <laughs> Funny. I reckon it would be easier. Well, unless you've done it both ways, you wouldn't know, would you? <laughs> what makes you think I ain't? You think you're my first bounty. I don't know what you are or who you've been. Are you even a widow of the Confederacy? I am a widow. And my husband was a member of the Confederate Army. Oh, that there is two answers in one question. He died more recent. See, we ain't said nothing true. Well, there was both things true. So what, he died and left you to do this man's work, is that about right? It is why I'm doing it, yes. Well, if this is what he left you, you weren't much of a man. I would thank you not to speak of my husband. My apologies. And I'll thank you for that hog leg bag. It's mine. Besides, I got all the bullets anyway. You mean these? I keep a few where it counts. Should only need one, but with your blackhead, I might need two. You wouldn't get but one. Well, you're welcome to throw as many bullets as you like. Come on. Now, there ain't a horse to steal or a farmer to rob or a blacksmith to hold a gunpoint. Tennessee has been a real bust for me. It doesn't kill my husband, so hasn't been a Sunday in church for me either. Well, if we don't want to walk all night to Nashville, I suggest we build a fire. We'll keep it small. You think somebody's on our back trail? That's what I would do. And these ain't the shoot from the bushes kind of hombres, which is good, because I always figured that uh, if I got killed, it was because I got shot in the back. Uh, I like to have a fighting chance. And these are the types that just walk right up and shoot you in the face. gonna take off John when we find him. His teeth? We don't know that he's dead. He's dead. He'd have caught up to us by now. He would have met us down at that creek. Well, then yeah. His teeth, I reckon. And Jesse? Everything! You'll get your chance.
There's boot prints here. Small. A woman's. But that there. Now that looks like the cracked heel of Jesse's boot. Within a day. Within a day. <laughs> You know, if my night eyes were better, I could shoot and net a couple more rabbits. <laughs> well, I hear that eating ain't bad up at the Tennessee State Penitentiary. I hear they work those prisoners in a coal mine. <laughs> well, it's better than a rope in a tree. You said anything about a rope in a tree? All the men up at Sugar Hollow. I think you know I didn't do that. Well, I figured done enough bad on the prod, one way or the other. I shot a man named John Sheets. Well, I mistook for another man. I regret that, but I don't regret nothing else I've done. I ain't got no reason to. Oh, they call you a Robin Hood and all the papers, but I don't see you throw no money to the poor folks of Tennessee. I never should have started a gang up here. You know, I figured two of them were weak, you know, followers, but the other two... I guess I didn't know them like I thought I did. <laughs> you didn't know them. They were outlaws, weren't they? They were men, weren't they? I reckon. So... Maybe I know something about them. We were homesteaders, after the war, up near Fork Mountain. The men came from the mining camp. What they were looking for, I don't know. What they took. My husband fought. Until they killed him. I fought. I fought till I couldn't fight no more. One day I took my husband's gun and went up to the mountain. I wasn't never going to forget them faces, so it didn't take me long to find them. I shot them in the saloon. Then I took their bodies out, put it in a wagon, took them to the nearest sheriff, which was all the way out in Brayton. Why don't you just leave the bodies where they lay? I did it so everyone would know it was over. So, so I would know it was over. I didn't do it for the money, but those men had a bounty on their heads, so the sheriff done paid me. He told me about another owl hoot holed up, so I went and shot him, but I didn't know what he'd done. Ever since then, I only kill men that I know have done bad things. You know, as it happens, you know, we're on the same side. You know, we're fighting the same men. We ain't never gonna be on the same side.
reckon it's a good thing he held on to that. <laughs> you okay? It's just the war. I know that. My husband used to speak of it. Well, I don't. It don't hurt. Do you remember what I said earlier? Because I haven't forgotten. I can't. I was just thinking about Frank. I was, I was kind of wishing that he was with us on this ride of ours. He always knew what to do. <laughs> well, for my part, I'm glad he's not. You know, I'm starting to figure out that you know, I was in charge of the robbing and the shooting, and, and he was just in charge of making sure I didn't get killed. Frank will always be my brother, but Bloody Bill will always be like a father to me. He was killed by Union soldiers near the end of the war, and uh, one of the soldiers cut off his finger to get out of ring. They didn't have to do that. I mean, it was, we had already lost. I mean, it was, it was so pointless. It was so stupid. It was. He was under a Union lieutenant colonel named Samuel Cox, so after the war, I tracked him down. During a bank robbery, I shot a man named John Sheets, who, who I mistook for Cox. I thought it was him under a different name, but I was wrong. This is the one thing I regret. And if I'm gonna die soon, if I'm gonna hang, it's, I'll go with that in my mind because it is, I'm not responsible for what happened here in Tennessee, but I did do the other. So how do we find those men? Oh, I reckon they'll find us. <laughs> What did you take his teeth for? You already got most of yours. Come on, man. I'm not always going to be this pretty. <laughs> you should have buried them with John. It's not like we actually buried them. We just threw some rocks on them and all. Toothless John was my pard. Yeah. I reckon he was. So you need to show respect for my part. Ain't I your part? Sometimes your best part, the dead part. You want to be my best part? Come on, man, we can shoot each other up right now if you want. Or we can hunt Jesse James. Sure. You might get to jump on us and shoot us. But we could track him real carefully now and get to jump on him and just save our skins. But what's it gonna be? But what's it gonna be? bury them teeth. to stop and come around here. It don't work that way. I think I see breakfast.
wish you all had shot it in the dark meat. I shot it in the head? You cannot get a better shot than that. What much of a shot? One much bigger than you. Want to cut cards for it? Do what? Cut cards. Who has cards? Oh, you know, deal a little pharaoh when the man hunts slow. You ever play pharaoh? I've done shot a couple of pharaoh dealers who cheated me one time, if that counts. <laughs> So you don't know how to play pharaoh? Of course I've done played pharaoh. It's something to do when the sporting girls are busy. <laughs> if that's the only time you play pharaoh, you don't know pharaoh. You got any money? Well, do you? Damn. I'm talking about taking money off you the honest way. Oh, I thought you said all pharaoh dealers was crooked. I'm about to chew my arm right out of these handcuffs like a wolf out of trap. I swear to God. I'll play it. Play for matches. All right. I'll play fair and square. Even without my dealing box, we'll play soda to hawk. Soda to hawk. Earn the soda. Banker's card. English card. God damn it. English card, the carte anglaise. See, that there, that looks like cheating, all right? You bet the high card. Oh, English card low. Double it. Goes to the house. <laughs> Call the bet. I'm busted. <laughs> well, I guess I'll make the fires from here on out. Let's play cards for the gun. The gun? Yeah. Low card, you uh, take the gun and shoot me. High card, I take the gun and shoot myself. <laughs> All right, well, you done lost at a shooting contest and at cards. I reckon we keep wandering around here long enough, we'll find something you're good at. Is we, or ain't we, gonna try two points of the compass again? How'd that work out for the rest of the gang? We're doing a bushwhacker style then. You deserve anything left? I can take him. A couple owl hoots in the ground that might think differently. <laughs> All right. You got any ideas on this trail? Yeah. <laughs> I think I got an idea. So who is the most famous owl hoot you've stood up against? Trying to see where you stack up? I don't see where you stack up. <laughs> well, we ain't gonna like this, but I done chased the Farrington brothers. We served under Quantrill? Yup. What happened with them boys? Well, Hillary, I turned over to the Pinkertons. He got loose, but fell into a paddle wheel after that. There weren't enough left of him to pour into a bucket. And the brother? Levi? Oh, I took him back to Tennessee. Some vigilantes got a hold of him though. And uh, yeah, he didn't even make it to trial. They just shot him a couple times and then hung him for good measure. It's a rough way to go out. That's Tennessee justice. So, what about you? What about me? Well, who's the most famous gun you ever went up against? Famous, I don't know. Bought some awfully good Yankees and a few half-decent Pinkertons. So nobody by name? Well, like, what do you mean by name? Well, there's any number of Herbs or Mastersons he could have gone up against. You know how far away the Mormon are? Well, some of them ain't so famous. Well, the Herbs sure are famous. You fight one, you gotta fight them all. Oh, and I didn't even stop to ask about Doc Holliday or Wild Bill. Well, to their great fortune, I never traveled to meet him. So, 
who did you shoot to get so famous? Well, it ain't about who you done fought. What is it about then? It's a way of doing things. Hmm. Funny. Thought of being a famous gunfighter meant you fought famous people with guns. Any man, woman, dog, or bear here in Tennessee, it's all going to be the same. You don't start a fuss, there ain't going to be a fuss. Come on. Funny place to leave a bucket. Has somebody else seen a bear around here? No. No, that's been here a real long time. Look, there's moss growed up on one side of it. No, I reckon not. You know, you really do read signs like a greenhorn. Well, even if I did, somebody lives around here. <laughs> Nothing around here. Mine's played out. Farming's too hard. Uh, trying to think like my big brother. And he would say we can't lead him here. Well, we're not leading nobody nowhere. Well, they are following us, so we're leading. I was told they were following every point of the compass, and uh, we closed off a couple of them points. Well, that's definitely one way of thinking about it. They probably think you're let out for Missouri, but you're going to Nashville. I might just yet make Missouri. Well, I figure you're going to end up in Nashville. May just get this out of force. Howdy, pard. Looks like you got yourself into a bit of trouble. That's some trouble I wouldn't mind getting into myself. So it was you, Red. Told you to shoot that little gal last time. I told you to slit her throat if you wanted to. I don't finish other people's jobs. What would be the fun of it if she didn't live to tell the tale? So it was you. Sure was. Why? Why'd you have to break up the gang, Jesse? It was my gang. That's your problem. You think you're something you ain't. Like you're some sort of, of like a wild, famous outlaw hero. <laughs> yeah. People, people gonna know sooner or later that ain't the thing. 
I've known you since Quantrill's Raiders Red. Yeah. That there? That's another problem. How is that a problem? Ah, oh, damn it, Rhodes. You shoot that girl and talk later! Now, why is that? Damn it! You would have me shoot a woman before the end of this! Now, she's a tad runty, but I think we'll make her last a day or two. <laughs> She's the one with the shooting iron, Red! Don't fool with her! Don't speak for me. I'm the one you gotta worry about. Worry about you? You look bare-handed, old pard. Now, nah, he's right. He's a fella we gotta watch out for. Bare-handed or not. So are we gonna chatter like old maids? Or is something gonna happen? She's right, Mitt. So you gonna shoot her? I, uh, well, uh, <laughs> I don't want to shoot or stab no woman, but uh, they'll slap one from here to Kentucky and back. What the hell, Mitt? Anybody can do that. You shoot her then. Hey, ain't nobody gone to no woman. Shut up, Jesse. Don't talk like I'm not here. Go on then. Go on, then what? Well, you said you wanted to slap me from here to Kentucky and back. You stay out of this, sissy! I can't go too far from the fracas. I ask you, stay out of this! I ain't gonna stop you from getting beaten up if that's what you're asking. You'll both be sorry. So you like to watch. Is that it, then? Something don't seem right here. Up the lay of this land. Oh, you best try to slap me. Nah. Reckon we ought to kill Jesse first. So I was right. You stop confusing things, Red! Don't keep talking like I'm not here! Slap me or draw? <laughs> no, I never. Slap me or draw! You're asking for it. Why are you? Stand up and face me! Now, face me! God damn it! Come on, come on, come on. Come on! Come on! Show yourself! You show yourself! Stop. Let's keep running. You won't need to be spared! I'm coming for you, Jesse! I'm so sorry, Bill. Sorry? I threw off your shot. I should have let you take it. I, I weren't trying to kill him. Why the hell not? 
I was saving him for you. I can't stand and fight him. I can't leave you here. I can't leave you here, but I can't stay here neither. This whole time? You want to be mad or happy about now? Damn, you got more strength than 10 men. <laughs> that ain't a compliment. Thanks. <laughs> Just promise you're going to shoot better than you did at them cams. I actually do better when they're shooting back. <laughs> Come on out here and fight me square! My idea of square ain't hiding your yellow back against some tree. This all right by you? See now, this here looks like square. I need to ask you one question. I won't say words over you, but I will bury you. That is, if throwing rocks on you is considered a burial. Well, it's more than what I'll do for you, but uh, that ain't my question. Go ahead. What was he saying about Quantrill? That mind of yours. It's slow, but it do work. Well, my pappy always says, uh, slow and steady wins the race. How long he been dead, anyhow? <laughs> I asked you about Quantrill. He never should have left Quantrill and moved on with Bloody Bill back to Missouri. Well, Quantrill died in Kentucky, so uh, maybe that worked out for all of us. And so did Bloody Bill. And them Yankee boys dragged his body through the streets. What's that got to do with anything? William Quantrill, he was a man. A man you could follow. But that saddle Bloody Bill tried to fix me up on, never did fit just right. You could have gone with George Todd and his men. Of course, Todd is also dead as it happens. I wanted my own men. Well, maybe you could have got them once Bloody Bill died. Of course, they started following Little Arch Clement, who also is dead, last I knowed. Well, maybe they'd be alive if they followed me. Well, I reckon uh, Bud Mitt and Old Toothless John's Hanks may say different. Bloody Bill's men? They should have been my men. And that would have made all this worth it. I don't know what you're getting at, Red. Jesse, it was me that told Sam Cox and them Union boys where to find Bill Anderson that day in Missouri. You did what? It didn't turn out the way I wanted, Jesse. You done shot a gun. You didn't check to see which direction the gun was pointed. I reckon not, but as the crow flies, them men are dead, and you and me, we above ground. For now. For now. 
Bloody Bill was like a father to me. I know that. You know, at first I was doing this for myself, and I was doing it for that little girl back there. But I suppose in the end, it all comes back to Bloody Bill. You and I, we both died with those men. I reckon we should stay dead! <laughs> Jesse? It's all right. I'm here. Got you a little souvenir. <laughs> <laughs> the gang? It's dead. I reckon it has been dead for a long time now. And what happened at Sugar Hollow along with it? And for some people, maybe. And for others, not so much. I know how that feels. I reckon I do too. That's right. Those two men. What two men? Those two back there. <laughs> You're owed half the bounty. <laughs> <laughs> It ain't my line of work, exactly. <laughs> All right. Here, 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 come on. All right. That's enough for now. Looks like the bullet passed clean through. If it don't hurt like pure hell, though. Well, I haven't done a shot twice. I reckon you can survive it. Well, as a matter of fact, I reckon you can survive just about anything. Jesse? I don't like the way you're looking, Jesse. What you got on your mind, Jesse? Jesse? Jesse! You know, all this time I've been treating you like a woman, but you don't fought like a man, so now I'm gonna treat you like a man. Damn it, Jesse. And a man, I leave tied up to a tree and walk away before we have a gunfight. Jesse! Jesse, don't make me chase you! Howdy, Jesse. Oh, I can never sneak up on you, Frank. Because I'm Hawkeyes. Actually, I done smelled you. Y'all been living rough? Maybe a little. You ain't, uh, ain't wearing a gun no more. If I need to scare a fox out of the hen house. Now that is a sorrowful thing to hear Frank James say. It's a good life, little brother. Well, I'm glad you can make it out to the run of this. My days ain't so full. And I like it that way. How about you? Is the James Gang dead for good? I don't know. I might sneak my way up to Missouri one more time. I got some itchy feet. More like the itchy finger. Well, you know me too well, I reckon. I do. You know, uh, 
Dick Little is out on the Alahood Trail again. He knows two brothers, uh, Charlie and Bob Ford. Ain't never heard of them. I reckon they ain't the younger brothers, though. Well, they probably ain't, but even so, I'd like to see what kind of outlaws it is. The James gang rides one more time. Just James rides one more time.